Welcome back. Breeders' Crown Night continues from Woodbine Racetrack, 11 minutes away from the two-year-old Philly Trot Final, where the undefeated Pampered Princess is the headliner. Trevor Ritchie still riding high, following his victory tonight with Majestic Sun. He's had a tremendous record in the Breeders' Crown over the years, but no night better than a night back in the year 2000 when Trevor Ritchie became part of Breeders' Crown history. Field of 10 for the 2000 Breeders' Crown two-year-old Colton Gelding Trot Championship Final over $705,000. Uh, I had a whole bunch of live mounts uh, and, uh, uh, you know, obviously I didn't think I'd have the night I had, but I, I knew I had a lot of good shots and if things worked my way, uh, I could have a huge night. They turn for home. Banker Hall from 7th is roaring up on the outside. Uh, Banker Hall, you know, he, he'd raced good all year long and, uh, Coming into the race, uh, you know, he, he was sharp. I think he had maybe about the three or four hole. And uh, I got away a little further back than I would have liked. Uh, but he was kind of a funny horse at the gate sometimes. And uh, so I didn't get out of there very good. But uh, I got decent cover. And then uh, I fanned off wide coming off the turn. And he really sprinted hard uh, right through the wire. Banker Hall, Richie's got another one. Banker Hall got it a half a length. She was a surprise as far as she, she, I think she paid more than any of the other ones I drove. But uh, up in the driver's room before we went out, uh, I told a bunch of the guys that she could be the sleeper because she did race really good uh, in the elimination. It's Syrinx Hanover and Trevor Ritchie on top by three. Syrinx, uh, yeah, she was a heavy favorite. And uh, I was pretty confident with her. She, uh, I just figured if I didn't make any mistakes, she'd likely get me to the wire first. That's how I thought. Syrinx Hanover and Trevor Ritchie bring it home to win the Breeders' Crown two-year-old Philly Trot. It's hard to put into words how you feel after a night like that, uh, but uh, you know, obviously I'll remember it uh, to the end of time, to the end of my time anyway. <laughs> one A, real desire in post three. I also had one more live mount who I also thought had a serious shot. It was a uh, real desire. Uh, and uh, I mean, he raced very good. Uh, I had to come first up with him. I got in a position where I ended up first up. And, and he still finished third and uh, raced real good, but, you know, he also got a big check. Well, I mean, the Breeders' Crown, you know, to me is like a grade A uh, racing in uh, thoroughbreds. Uh, you know, you get the top horses, the top drivers, the top trainers, you know, you're, you lump them all together. So, uh, you know, you're, you know, if you do good, you're, uh, uh, you know, you're beating the best. And, uh, you know, the tradition to the Breeders' Crown and, you know, the saying, it all comes down to the Breeders' Crown. and. You know the press and everything. It's uh, you know it's all hyped up. So uh, it's uh, it's a it's a thrilling time of year when you get to race in the Breeders' Cup. Horses on parade for race number six, the two-year-old Philly Trot Division. We had numbers one, Matriarch, go through the screen there with Rig Zero on aboard. The heavy favorite, the one that everybody's looking for, though, Pampered Princess with Brian Sears. Much more to come on this one to five favorite in moments. Jack Moiseev drove right through the post parade with Adelaide Hall. Nothing holding her back tonight for trainer Annette Lawrenson, one of the elimination winners last week when 18 to one. Possessed the magic, the four. This one, third choice of the betters, actually second choice right now. It's seven to one with a veteran Mike Lachance on board for Ron Gerfine, a five-time Breeders' Crown winner. Six uh, make that five in the field with Trevor Ritchie looking to come right back on the Mario Zanetti pupil. Falls for you. Six horse and a long shot at over 30 to one right now is CC's Casey's Dream. Finished fifth and just squeaked in here from the limbs last week. Seven is Sheer Soul. Dave Miller doing the driving on this one for trotting specialist Osvaldo Formia. This is the number eight horse, Celebrity Speedy. Not Sweetie, but Speedy. Ron Pierce aboard for Jimmy Tactor, one of a couple in the field, trained by Mr. Tactor. The nine is Constance Hall with the Ontario Connections here. Bob McIntosh, the trainer for Kentucky owner Walnut Hall. This one driven tonight by Steve Condren. And to complete the field, 37 to one on Wishful Me. Where's the trotting hobbles? Jody Jamison on board for Ohio-based trainer Don Swick. That's the field for race number six, two-year-old trotting Philly division. Race where we have a odds on favorite, in fact, one to five favorite right now on Pampered Princess. An undefeated streak is on the line. Can she go nine for nine? Pampered Princess heading the two year old Philly Trot final. And Two-year-old trotting fillies on the track, three minutes on the clock. You might think with a two to five favorite, now reduced to one to two, that 
Pampered Princess might be a clean, clean sweep of the so-called experts, but Greg Blanchard going in a different direction. He sees Possess the Magic currently at 7-2 to two as a horse that might be able to come through. One horse that's a big price is named Matriarch. The trainer, Ted Nadazzi, has only won 35 races in his life, 12 races over the last decade, one race this year, and he brings in a one-time winner in Matriarch. Renee, Ted really has uh, his work cut out for him with Matriarch, but the way things have been going tonight, you just never know. We've had some long shot payoffs and right now uh, Matriarch is at 20 to 1 and Ted is kind enough to join us. You bred this filly, you're the trainer, the owner. First of all, why did you go to Duke of York? Uh, it was mostly my brother's idea. He, he knows breedings very well and he knows that balanced image bloodline crosses into my mare's bloodline very well. And we went there to, to one day together and looked at Duke of York and uh, he said, Ted, this is the one you got to breed to. Okay, and this is his first crop, the two-year-olds being his oldest crop. A couple of weeks ago, Zeron said uh, when this filly was going against older rivals, he said, if she races good enough here tonight, we're going to head for the Breeders' Cup. And she, she did, and uh, she did very well in her limb as well. Yeah, she had to race really good that night to show us something, because up until that time, she wasn't what you call a Breeders' Cup material. And uh, her last two starts have been really good. We're very pleased. So Rick's excited, I'm excited, and we're just honored to be here. We are here at the Breeders' Crown is what that is. I think well, you, I inadvertently yeah, said Breeders' Cup and then you carried on. So uh, a nice filly. What's, what sort of trip are you anticipating with this filly tonight? Um, Rick will probably just feel her out as she leaves. And uh, we have the best horse right beside us. So I th I'm sure that will factor into play. And uh, I really don't know. I'm just going to keep my fingers crossed and hope for the best. And Rick will work that out. And, and it must be just a thrill even just to be here. Oh, for sure. If it's not a thrill, then you shouldn't be in the business. Okay. So We're definitely. Absolutely. Good luck with this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. And Ron, we talked about Duke of York. Uh, you know, it looks as though he could be maybe one of the nice up-and-coming stallions. Oh, I think so. He's got some nice youngsters out this year. A couple of fillies look good and a couple of colts also. Uh, they were well received at the London sale. I bought one myself. And uh, I, I think he could be anything. I was, I was in love with Duke of York's damn Amber Monarch. She was a small filly, but a great filly. And I was in love with her and I just followed it through. We've seen some other horses on our program so far tonight that looked as though they were untouchable. What about Pampered Princess? Well, I think she's untouchable. I mean, uh, he didn't even pull the earplugs last week. She wins so handy. I think she wins handier than any of the horses in the eliminations last week. And, uh, you know, if she gets beat, the favorites are getting beat. If she gets beat, I'm going to be very disappointed, I guess. And so, too, will the connections in her career has yet to be defeated. She is 9 for 9. Pamper Princess, the daughter of Angus Hall, looking to make it an even 10. Mike? I call this the gym division. Looking back through the history of the division on the trainer and driver's side, we've had winners, well, four from the Jimmy Tactor Barn, a couple that he drove. Another winning trainer in Jim Miller, Jim Glum, Jim Martinez. And then on the Jan side, Jan Johnson and Jan Nordin. So most of the winners, the majority of the 22 years, have gone to somebody named Jim or Jan. Who knows, Pampered Princess Bob, uh, a one to two, certainly has the credentials to justify that price. Oh yeah, Bob Anderson, uh, the owner, had Cabrini Hanover t division title this last year. Now Valley High Stable bred Pampered Princess. They bred Chocolatier to win a two-year-old crown last year. Tactor, Jimmy Tactor looking for his 10th. But Sears and Tactor have never combined for a Breeders' Crown win before. This could be the first time that happens. Possess the Magic, this is a matchup of the two fastest two-year-old trotting fillies in harness racing history here. And Possess the Magic is the fastest. She's getting a little bit overlooked here. I can see three to one on the board. And number eight, Celebrity Speedy, has that kind of speed to get into the race, that could be the difference between outlasting the rest. Certainly, if you're looking at the number of lifetime wins, you would have to think Pampered Princess, nine for nine, and with eight wins this year, possess the magic, the two standouts in the field, where there are five horses, Greg, that have just one win apiece. And uh, that's the one that I'm going to possess the magic for the mild upset tonight. Uh, she's been very close to her rival, just unable to uh, finally get the better of her. Maybe tonight is the night. LaChance knows his way to the Breeders' Crown Winner Circle. Already scored earlier tonight. LaChance and Gerfine won this division back in 95 with Continental Victory. She came back the next year to win the Hamiltonian. So I think if uh, a Philly can upend the undefeated one, it is Possess the Magic. Final thoughts, guys? Well, I'd have to think Pampered Princess is the race to lose just because of the way she won last week. I don't think she has to go right to the front. In fact, very rarely is she on the early lead. I think Brian Sears, who's been uh, able to observe uh, and compete in some of the races tonight, will probably have sensed that, yeah, the strong wind seems to be uh, hindering horses that are hard used in the race. If there's a couple of three lead changes in the mile, you certainly don't want to be the first leader 
Uh, as we saw back in race number five, we did see a majestic son who was good enough to leave, retake, and still win, but not all horses are that good. Ken? I know I speak for all of us. We want to send a quick shout out to one of our colleagues who's not here with us tonight, Chris Connor. All the best to him as he's watching in, I'm sure, somewhere. Enjoying all the action so far. We've got the Breeders' Crown final for the two year old trotting fillies coming up next. Ten of the sport's best freshman trotting fillies in behind the gate for their Breeders' Crown final. Here they come. They're off and trotting in the first move off the wings of the gate goes to Sheer Soul. Sheer Soul to the front. Up on the outside, trotting up with her now goes Constance Hall. She knuckled over and made a break, though Constance Hall has made a costly miscue getting away from the gate. Sheer Soul marches to the lead. Trotting in to be second is Possess the Magic as they move into the opening turn. Away well from in third, Celebrity Speedy on the outside. In at the rail from in fourth is Pampered Princess. She'll make a hole and sit back and forth. Towards the inside, fifth is Adelaide Hall. Sixth at the inside is Matriarch. Then seventh away is falls for you and the last three in the field CC's Casey's dream wishful me and far back Constance Hall the opening quarter in 29 seconds flat so they ready for the back stretch and on the lead it's 70 to one shot sheer soul right there second tip to the outside Mike LaChance is on the move now with possess the magic and the daughter of self-possessed trots from second to the front and on the outside possess the magic will find the lead just before the half back in second ride sheer soul now sitting at the rail from in third towards the inside is celebrity speed Brian Sears has given Pampered Princess her cue to trot to the outside. She goes from fourth to third, now second, and will tackle Possess the Magic, who has the half-mile advantage on her side. A 59-3 walk fest to the half. Only 30-3 in the second quarter. Up on the outside, second now. The leader, Pampered Princess, shows a half-length lead. LaChance clings to Possess the Magic as they trot that turn now. Off stride from in third at the rail went Sheer Soul. The outside taking over third is Adelaide Hall. Three-quarter time in 127 and four fifths so renewing their rivalry as they come off the final turn two of the top trotting fillies in the world this year fighting back at the inside possess the magic but on the outside pampered princess pokes her head in front possess the magic on the inside fighting back now pampered princess on the outside in second here comes possess the magic to fight back off the soft fractions michael shots will win his second crown tonight and it's possess the magic pampered princess second best tonight 157 and two-fifths. It will not sway the voters at the end of the season, but all the same, quite a feather in the cap for the connections of Possess the Magic and LaChance, a crown double. Absolutely, Mike LaChance uh, perhaps getting better with age. KG Drive here, Possess the Magic, finally able to turn the tables on her arch rival, Pampered Princess, and she gets herself now into the year-end picture with the win. She'll have to do more, but they can't take away this one. It's a Breeders' Crown Championship for Gerfine and LaChance. Mike LaChance into the winner's circle for the second time tonight. Possessed the magic, getting it done at 3-1. to one. And Greg Blanchard was all over this one. Yeah, he had uh, pecked her, and she she raced good last week. You know, she was an easy second, and uh, she got a good trip tonight, got things her way, and she was a winner. Indeed she was, and Pampered Princess now has one second-place finish on her 10-lifetime race record so far but Mike LaChance back into the winner's circle and a great uh, great effort by Possess the Magic to stop the clock in 57 and 2. Mike? Well the Brittany Farms already had one favorite go down to defeat earlier in the program three-year-old trotting filly passionate glide was upended but here they get a little bit of revenge the Ron Gerfine train but Brittany own Possess the Magic. At this point down the back stretch they're just by the half that's her on the outside right now she is about to clear over the lead David Miller and long shot sheer soul Huge long shot on the race who would eventually go off stride. Headed past the half and that's going to leave Brian Sears uncovered on that last turn. He's going to be first up for the last quarter mile. And a big, big effort from Possess the Magic to hold off favorite Pampered Princess through the lane. Greg? One of the dynamic duos in harness racing over the years, Ron Gerfine and uh, Mike LaChance getting it down. And what a night for Mike, uh, two wins. And this one maybe not an expected one, uh, as was the case with Calgary Hanover. But uh, were you quietly confident in your filly coming in? I, I was confident that I, I didn't think, honestly, I didn't think I could beat uh, the other filly. But, um, you know, I got away with the half and 59 and 3. And, you know, that... Uh, that kind of filly that she could uh, she could sprint at the end with anybody. So that's what that's what happened, you know. That lazy third quarter and would just sprint and a stretch. And uh, but she was digging in at the end and uh, she was she was good. It was strong tonight. 
your filly seems like the kind uh, that's pretty much push button. It looks like you can do anything you want with her. And uh, how big a weapon is that at this stage? Uh, it's, it's big. It's very important, especially for a two-year-old trotting filly. And uh, she's the opposite way she was at the beginning of the year. So we, we <laughs> couldn't do anything with her at the beginning. Now or you'll do anything you want. How special is this night for you, Mike? Uh, you've had many great ones in your career, but uh, a crown double early on this evening. Oh, it's, uh, <laughs> every time you know Winter Circle and the Breeders' Crown, it's always special. <laughs> Congratulations, so. Mike, and uh, maybe the hat trick later on. Continue good Thank luck. You. Thank you. We'll grab uh, Ron Gerfine, uh, the guru Mikey, as he's thank known. Thank you, Mikey. And uh, Ronnie, uh, just first of all, how special is this win for you? Oh, it's very, very special. I mean, I just I always thought this filly was as good a filly. I, I, I never thought she was better. You know, Jimmy and I are friends, and I always thought that she was as good a filly, and I thought that the first time we raced here, she got bogged down in the mud, and she made a flurry, and, you know, she was five lengths back in the middle of the stretch and got beat a half a length, and, uh, and I thought she could have won that night if we had been in a better better place, and the second and last last week, Mike had to put her on the front end, and she was hitting the bike, and he couldn't drive her at all. He couldn't ask her. He was afraid she'd run. So, uh, you know, I was much more confident than he was coming in. I really thought I had a good chance to win. Her, 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 uh, her race in Lexington, she was three deep down the back stretch, three deep in the turn, and she pulled away by five and set a world record that's going to be a long time to be broken. So, uh, you know, I think she's a great filly. All right, tremendous Breeders' Crown record for you as well, Ron. Congratulations. Thank you kindly. Ron Gerfine getting it done, possessed the magic for driver Mike Lachance, his second win on the card. And the trainer says that will be her final start of the campaign. What a way to end it off. There's a look at the prices. $8.10 in victory, $2.70, $2.60. We have the 4-2 exactor worth $14.50. And we had Superfecta wagering in race number six, $163.05. When you tossed in fourth place finisher falls for you. Here's a look at the order of finish in race number six. Well, outside starters Constance Hall with a break and Wishful Me off the gate got nothing. They were ninth and tenth. The inside start for Matriarch, well, not her night. She'll have to come back and play next year. But the stars of the field acquitted themselves very well. Pampered Princess, a beaten favorite second, possessed the magic, victorious from post four. The connections that sent out her winning sire, self-possessed, click with the daughter. Lachance and Gerfine on Possessed the Magic. Time to take another short commercial break. Still more left to come. Breeders' Crown Night continues next from Woodbine. <laughs>